right mood Indeed. and uh, to make the vibes even better, immaculate, some might say, oh, we yeah. welcome in via the DNM leasing hotline our friend, uh, football aficionado, college football sicko, generally good guy, spoonerism lover. His name <laughs> is David Hellman. He's the uh, host of the NFL on Fox podcast. Hellman, what's happening, my man? What's up, Dave? Generally, good guy is like the best introduction I've ever gotten, Reg. So thanks, man. I'm good. I'm good. It's true. So, you know, I like to make sure that people know the truth about our friends. And look, man, this this week, it feels like we have not talked a lot about the Washington Commando game because it is the Washington Commando game. I'll ask you right up front. Is there a single solitary thing that scares you for the Cowboys about these commandos? Uh, the fact that... They were in the same spot more or less last year, and mm -hmm. Washington kicked their ass. I mean, I know last year's game has no bearing on this year's game. It, it certainly seems like Washington is a team that's packed it in. That defense is, ooh, it's really atrocious. Uh, Sam Howell kind of, it kind of seems like they broke him, like he short circuited somewhere around Thanksgiving and just hasn't been the same guy. But uh, Sam Howell had never started an NFL game this time last year. And the Cowboys weren't playing for the division, but they had plenty on the line going into that game. And I think they lost by 20. So um, yeah. I, don't, I don't expect that to happen, but uh, it's, it's not something the Cowboys can afford to take lightly, not with everything that's at stake. Do you think Ron Rivera comes back? And is there anything he could – see, I keep thinking about this Lovey Smith thing down in Houston last year. I'm just trying to figure out, is there any way that Ron Rivera could pull a win out of his behind? I mean, I absolutely think he can pull a win out of his butt. It's the NFL, and crazier things have happened. I mean, there have been bigger upsets this season than this. Oh, yeah, uh, that's Philadelphia. So it's, it's definitely possible, but to the bigger point of your question, I mean, I don't think that can save Ron Rivera, in all honesty. I mean, this team hasn't won a game since November 5th, and on top of that, this is, I mean, the, own, the, the ownership is completely different. This is a completely new franchise looking for a completely fresh start. Even if Washington wins, they're going to pick, like, in the top five or six of this draft. Uh, I just think it makes, it, it makes way too much sense to start the clock over on your entire franchise. Get a new head coach, a new mm. general manager, probably draft a new quarterback. Um, so, I mean, it, it's nothing personal against Ron Rivera, but... I think they could win this game by 20, and it wouldn't save his job, in my opinion. Now, Dave, you know that around these parts, uh, we're celebrating, in a way, the return of one of your fellow Louisiana boy, Lyle Collins. And I think his return highlights, you know, just the level of concern that is around the offensive line for these Cowboys. Uh, for you, what does the kind of bruised offensive line mean for the Cowboys' prospects in January as the, the playoffs are coming? I mean, look. The offensive line should scare you until further notice. Like, hmm. obviously, Tyler Smith is go is dealing with an injury right now. Tyron Smith just has the ghost of an injury hovering above him at all times. Like, you should always be worried about that being a possibility. Terrence Steele, um, I mean, I give the guy credit for coming back so quickly from injury, but particularly as a pass blocker, this has not been a season to remember from him. So, yeah, you should have concerns. Um, hopefully Tyler Smith can get right whether he plays this weekend or not. I, you know, With Lyle Collins now on the team, I, I'd be tempted to give Tyler the time off to get ready for the playoffs. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't think LC's there as a cure-all. It's kind of like – it's similar to me to Dalvin Cook going to Baltimore earlier today. Is like, yeah, the name is a big name that you remember – um, I don't know that LC is ready to go in there and just be this road grader. It's certainly not like right away after having some time off, but depth is good. Like I, this is just me and not, maybe I'm biased because he went to LSU and he's a friend of mine, but I'd rather plug LC in there if something happens than uh, one of the young rookie cats that they've had to rely on over the course of the year. So it's good to have depth. Hopefully you don't have to ask too much of him, but He's a guy that's played a lot of guard and a lot of tackle in the NFL, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having that available if you need it. So there's that portion of it, but then also it makes me think of, and you actually tweeted about this, yes, I am uh, aware and alert to your tweets, about uh, kind of the one-dimensional nature of this Cowboys team and the ways in which that's been their M.O. 
in the playoffs, you know, game that's very game script dependent, right? And so is there a way that the Cowboys can find a way to, you know, maybe supplement that passing attack in any way, whether it's, you know, getting the ball out quickly to short or just like finding some run in there? Ooh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If we were gonna see if we were gonna see a semblance of like a balanced run game, I think we would have seen it by now, just because mm-hmm. like the offensive line has had spurts of good health. And then you look at you look at some of the teams that you know that you're likely talking about having to go against in the playoffs. Whether I mean San Francisco and Philadelphia and even Detroit. I mean that all speaks for itself. But uh, I don't think this is the exact same L.A. Rams team that they beat up on in October that they might be playing Indeed. in the playoffs. Whether it's you know Aaron Donald. His name escapes me, but they've got a rookie DT playing fantastic football right now. So like I, I mean. The, the level of competition you're going to be going against, I, I just I don't trust it. I would love to see this team utilize the screen game a little bit more. I think it's a great way to get pressure off of Dak from the receivers as well as the running backs. You know, I'm not charting their offense or anything, but that seems like an effective way to get Tony Pollard involved without charging him, you know, between the tackles. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more of that. And then I will say, I think hopefully you get Rico Dowdle back at least in time for the playoffs, if not this weekend. And he's, he's definitely got uh, some juice that I think we haven't seen consistently in the run game. So, uh, you know, I, th- I think there's reason for optimism that they can get something out of it. But with this little time left in the season, I mean, this is, this is your offense. And I think it's going to go as far as, as Dak can carry it. Yeah, and I, I think this offense is the Cowboys' best defense. In other words, they've got to get a lead and – Hope the other team has to play from behind. With that being said, do you think the Cowboys defense is good enough to stop a team that can run the ball in the playoffs? Because as you know, playoffs is is grinding and time of possession and kicking field goals. And I'm just kind of curious your thoughts about how Dan Quinn has kind of tried to show it up the last couple of weeks. I think you just said it. I mean, in a vacuum, look, it's, it's, it's our job to like nitpick the team and, Mm -hmm you know, really analyze everything they do. Like the numbers will tell you, yeah, the Buffalo game was a catastrophe, but the number, the numbers will tell you like they're middle of the pack against the run. Like right. it's not like it's, it's not like it's just this five alarm fire every week. Mike, and you said it yourself, CA, like how's the offense playing and what kind of pressure are you putting on the other team? Like exactly. if the off, if the offense is stalling out, not getting, you know, not even kicking field goals, punting. I mean, you remember, the I know it was a long time ago, but that Niners game, the defense for the most part stood up for for most of the first half. But without the offense taking any pressure on them, eventually the dam breaks. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I think the defense is good enough to to match up with most teams as long as the offense is putting points on the board and yep. putting pressure on the opponent to pass the ball. But if they can get into a favorable script where they can just pound the rock, yeah, I think they're probably screwed. But I think that applies to most NFL teams too. David Hellman, NFL on Fox podcast. Uh, Dave, who should Cowboys fans want these Cowboys team to face off against in wild card weekend? (laughs) I mean, is there a world where like the Minnesota Vikings can get through into the playoffs? They got an 11% chance if they win. (laughs) <laughs> the yeah, like I know the Vikings need a little bit of a hope and a prayer, but like I mean, if you're saying who Cowboy fans should want to see, I would probably say uh, the Minnesota Vikings because yeah. I mean the the Packers have plenty of reasons why they should make you nervous a little bit. Like I said, I don't think this is the same Rams team. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom though. I mean, look, they're eight and zero at home. They've won what 16 straight games at AT and T yep. Stadium. I like I like their odds against anybody that they get at home. Um, man, I think it would be a ton of fun to see Cowboys Packers just because that Packers offense is a lot of fun. Jordan loves playing with some crazy confidence. Mm-hmm. And also the Packers defense is atrocious. So if, uh, if those two teams go at it in a dome, I think it might be like a 35 to 31 type of game. And I mean, it would be stressful, but it would be a lot of fun. Track meet sounds fun. Track meet sounds fun. Um, now you know how this goes. I think we've I think we've adequately um, addressed the NFL, don't you? 
Yeah, as always. Yeah, and we can have some like little nonsense here at the end. Yeah, um, the nonsense being college, college football situation. Um, do, have you been able to make uh, anything of this college football final uh, situation that we have here? Because this is a very styles make fouls, uh, styles make fights type of matchup between Michigan and Washington, and I can't call it right now. I mean, I, I certainly I don't want to act like I have all the answers because. Call me an SEC homer if you want to, but but I mean I'm not. I don't like Alabama. I didn't want Alabama to win, but me neither. I I thought Bama would smash Michigan. I thought they'd win by like 14 points, and Michigan's defense really put on a show at the Rose Bowl. But having said that, I was I was there, and I hate to take credit away from either team, but I was watching it. And I was like, am I really watching two elite defenses, or am I watching two? pretty meh offenses and that's kind of what I came away f- with the impression of uh and I just I continue to think that people are sleeping on Washington mm, and I, I do too be- I thought that before they beat Texas mm-hmm. I mean Penix Penix's ability speaks for itself Washington's receiver core reminds me I mean I'm not trying to get it carried away but it reminds me of LSU in 2019 when they had three oh NFL guys on their team oh I mean boy. I think Washington's got three NFL receivers they got two really good offensive tackles that can buy Penix time. Um, like I said, I was wrong about the semis with Michigan, but I, I mean, I'm leaning Washington on Monday night. I am too, and for those reasons and more, the only quote unquote weakness is they their their running back number seven got hurt. Other than that, I like man, Washington well, is scary. Well, if especially of the semifinal teams, I think Washington's defense has the worst unit of those eight units that you would consider. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the one thing that you look at. Is are, are they able to kind of calm the, you know, the Blake Corum and Edwards runs mm-hmm. of Michigan? Because if you allow Michigan to stay in a place where they don't have to have J.J. McCarthy toss the rock too much, you could also still be in a bad way there. Well, Washington's got that the number is, one. No, and I think, I, think, I think Michigan's got the front to bully that game around. And they do. It's, it's proven incorrect all the time. Like, I'm not – this is a flawed strategy, but – if it's close, I'm always going to lean toward the better quarterback, and I do think I do think Michael Penix Jr. is a much better player right now than J.J. McCarthy. I, I totally agree. agree, and Washington's got something that I think no team has gotten has done since 1960. They've won 10 consecutive games of 10 points or less. They've won 21 in a row. The quarterback's insane. In fact, I hate to say this, but can you make the case that Jaden Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner from your school, is actually better than Penix Jr.? I mean, if you want me to, I will. I mean, look. I was throwing you a softball. He's walking you into dangerous waters, buddy. All due respect to, look, Michael Penix Jr. has had a hell of a season, and if they gave out the award after the semifinals, he would win it. But, I mean, Jaden Daniels had an equally impressive season throwing the ball and ran for 1,000 yards on top of it. He just had no defense. He, he, I mean, if CA, don't get me started because if LSU, <laughs> if LSU was even ranked like 60th nationally in defense, they would be in that playoff. You're right, and I 100 would, and I, something. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they're oh, dead last. That's why their D coordinator got fired the other day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not Jaden's fault that, that he had the worst defense in LSU history. Um, but I'm not trying to throw shade at Penix either. He's obviously an amazing player. Mm-hmm. Best college football bowl experience uh, of the 2023-2024 bowl season has been? I mean, I'm biased. I, so, you were at the Rose Bowl. Uh, you're going to do I the mean, sun in the in the uh, mountains? You're going to do this? Look, man, he was it's there. Badass. It's badass. Okay. It is. I mean, obviously, if we're not including that, uh, the Pop Tart Bowl was amazing. Like, and I don't even. I know Kansas State beat NC State. That's I don't right. remember anything. I don't remember Red anything school. about the game. Yeah, congrats to your Wildcats. Thank you. Every man a Wildcat. That's but right. like, what marketing genius! And you know, you know, every bowl next year is gonna be. You know, they're gonna be working their people around the clock to try to come up with a moment like that. They're gonna put so, a mascot in a toaster. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait <laughs> yeah. to see the live bad boy mowers let mascot uh, <laughs> next year. Yeah, exactly. I will. I will say this though. Look, like you can roll your all, eyes all you want, but uh, the Rose Bowl's badass, man. It is. When the sun, mm-hmm. when the sun's hitting the mountains, and it's like the fourth quarter of a tie game, and like half the stadium is blue and maize, and half the stadium is red. It's 
it it was really really cool. If you ever have a chance to go, you should. Quick question: Since you were there, we've heard the reports that there were Ohio State fans there just to blue boo, boo Michigan. How could you hear it clearly there? You were there. We heard about it, but you were there. Oh no! I I mean I'm sure there were people there that were doing that, but like it was it was a fifty fifty split with. Uh yeah, I mean mm-hmm. there was so much. Made yeah, you couldn't really hear him the way they were making a big deal out of that. No, right? yeah, okay. I did. There were there were a couple people near me wearing LSU gear, and I was like, all right, that's not really my style to wear LSU stuff to this game, but like respect, I appreciate it. Uh, before we let but, you go, um, oh sorry, did you have some? More no, 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 no. I was that was it. Okay, before we let you go, what we're about to talk about is uh what what we've been most wrong about this NFL season. Would you like to join us? Is there anything that you would like a mea culpa for? On a, oh, so boy. long. There's one. And, like, I mean, I've had some hits and some misses. It's not all bad, but, like, I had one of my biggest whiffs ever this year. And I, I really thought, uh, A, and I'm not ready to give up on the kid, but I thought Bryce Young was number one all the way. I was pro Bryce Young. Mm-hmm. I thought he was the man. I thought that he was capable of having a season like what C.J. Stroud's doing. And – by virtue of that, I thought the Panthers – I'm not saying I thought they were going to be great, but I thought the Panthers were going to make some noise this year. And uh, <laughs> that sure as hell did not happen. So I remember, like, somewhere around the time that CJ had his, like, third straight 300-yard game, I was like, damn, I really – I need to sit with myself and, like, really feel the shame of how bad this take was because I got that all kinds of wrong. That's uh, David Hellman, host of NFL on Fox. Uh, LSU Tiger and man with the audacity to believe that the Panthers would be good. Uh, Dave, I always appreciate your time. Love <laughs> you very much, buddy. I said decent, not good, but I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I love y'all too. Y'all, y'all take care. Have a good night.